I can remember when San Antonio, there was nothing, but it was slated for 80,000 homes and I think two or three golf courses and a bunch. You know, one person can make a big difference, but if you've got 10 people, that helps a lot. How do we preserve it? How can we make sure that this place is something that stays as it should? Well, I'm Kyle Cunningham. My mother taught me a love for history and my dad taught me a love for nature. My first visit to Government Canyon was actually around 1980. So 10, more than 10 years before actually the natural area transferred over to Parks and Wildlife. But I hiked in and we were headed to what at that time everybody called the stagecoach stop. The Z House, the Zisselman House. We made it there, but the whole way, you know, it was just me and my husband. And there were not, you know, people weren't coming in. There were people that were, were coming in, but not a lot, not a ton of people. Uh, the land was leased to a, somebody that ran cattle, uh, Mr. Barth, I believe. And uh, my husband had talked to him quite a bit. Of course, it was part of the San Antonio Ranch development. This part had never developed. It was slated for 80,000 homes and I think two or three golf courses and a bunch. But that had never ha or hadn't happened. You know, the whole hike, which was a pretty good one, it was very obvious to me that this was a very special place. You could feel the history. You could feel the Native Americans and the pioneer history. So with that first hike, it was obvious to me that this was a place that shouldn't turn into a development and three golf courses and 80,000 homes. So that was a full 10 years before we ever got a chance to do anything. I spent that 10 years trying to figure out how do we preserve it? How can we make sure that this place is something that stays as it should? How can we keep that feel and, and for others to experience? One of the main problems, I should say, in the area was water. And we knew that we'd had wells along um, Scenic Loop Road. What was happening, we were having these large golf courses coming in, drilling large wells, pumping them considerably, um, and we were losing wells. We were very familiar with the property up at San Antonio Ranch. Not only that, but the story of San Antonio Ranch. Irene Scharf, who's a dear friend and, and uh, great researcher, but they took a journalistic approach to telling the story of San Antonio Ranch. Its development, it was the first major having to do with development over the Edwards Aquifer. Bear County, Edwards Aquifer District, they were all part of that, the Sierra Club. They were all part of that lawsuit. And it was a major battle, which the environmentalists lost. So San Antonio Ranch was built. My first trip out was basically just the fact that this property was obviously full of history, full of uh, wonderful things having to do with nature. And then, of course, we knew that by the time we got a chance to work on it, the majority was all women. The Holotus Creek Association, we decided that yes, we wanted to work on the property. Irene knew the history of San Antonio Ranch. So we took that and took those players. We went to Bear County Commission. I called up the commissioner that was in charge of the area, Commissioner Elizondo, great guy. And uh, of course, got his, his assistant, his secretary. And I said, I'm a friend of Commissioner Elizondo's. I'd like to speak to him. And, uh, and he took the call. And so we talked and I said, do you, do you remember the San Antonio Ranch fight? I said, oh yeah. And I said, well, we have an opportunity. You know, would you be interested in working with us? And he said, yeah. So he got us on the agenda for a commissioner's court. And then Irene, wrote a resolution, which Irene is a great writer. And so she wrote a resolution. And basically within that resolution, that property to be taken off the auction block, we actually have had a meeting. Well, where did we want this property to go? You know, who would be the best to manage the property? It was Texas Parks and Wildlife. So we wrote it into the resolution. That small group of women went to commissioner's court I know it was B.B. and Mary, uh, Fenster Maker, Irene, myself, Anna Marie, who lived up at San Antonio Ranch. Rainy Bishop played a real role. And we went to commissioner's court, presented the, you know, they had the resolution. They passed it. 
Well, actually, they discussed, and then before they passed it, Commissioner Elizondo and County Engineer Tomasini pulled us to the side and said they had a little recess, and we went up to talk to them. And they said, ladies, you know, this is, this area is, it's going to be, we're going to work on it, and we're going to get this done. This is going to be, it's going to take quite a bit to do, and it's going to take time. But we know that the Restoration Trust Corporation has taken over the, you know, Government Canyon, which lays adjacent to this property. And uh, why don't you ladies work on a really large natural area? Yeah, we can do that. So what we did, again, Rainy Bishop, who's part of Great Forest Homeowners Association, uh, Rainy had worked for the Nature Conservancy. And so she started working on it. She called the Nature Conservancy. I had already called them because one of the things that the other group did, they had gotten it out there, that they were working on RTC properties. So I had called the Nature Conservancy, but, you know, and said, yeah, I'd like to help. And, well, are you a corporation? No. So then Rainey contacted the Trust for Public Lands and talked to Dave Sutton. Dave, after we got it off the, or the ProHab piece off of the uh, auction block, we let Dave know about that. He said, I think it might be worth me making a trip. He listened to what we were trying to do. We told him a little bit about the history of the property. We had a really good meeting. On the drive back, he said, you know, Kyle, he said, that's a really good group. He said, that's a strong group. And he said, I think we can work on this property. Dave knew how to work it with the real estate and, you know, how to work with us, kind of guide us along. I did a lot of the footwork, a lot of the research. So that's what we did. And back then, we weren't working with computers. We didn't have cell phones. You know, it was going to meetings, presenting, telling people what we were trying to do, why we were trying to do it, and selling the property. Well, I'll tell you, women in San Antonio, they, they are some pretty strong uh, preservation efforts that are built around women. What drove me with this place was just the history the, and the obvious history that was just going to be totally lost. And then the nature, what was here, what people could see, what they, you know, what they could be taught, which hopefully would then help to preserve more of what's out here. This is a fascinating area. And I thought people needed to know about that and it needed to be preserved. Well, t today, I just recently within the last year have come back to the board. Um, I kind of wanted to see what, you know, what was happening. But through the years, I've stayed uh, in touch. Uh, of course, I formed the, the Government Canyon Natural History Association, which became the Friends Group. We incorporated that. Um, got that rolling pretty well. And then, um, but I've come, I came back to see, okay, what's kind of what's happening. Through the years, I've stayed informed because my husband stayed here. He volunteered uh, and was out here, you know, just about every week and, you know, worked on different projects. And then also just as a volunteer and worked with people that were visiting. So he kept me, you know, up to date and then others kept me up to date also. So I kind of stayed with what was happening, and I made visits. I was always available. If they needed me, I was available. So last year, uh, you know, there was a, a board position they were looking at. I thought, okay. And I had been out working with uh, the trail patrol some. Gary Candy had mentioned that, that they were looking for. I thought, okay, well, thinking about retirement. It's going to happen one of these days. And then I knew exactly what I wanted to do because there's still a lot of history out here that hasn't been uncovered. There's still things I want to do here. Gather your facts. And again, understanding the jurisdictional maze. You know, one person can make a big difference. But if you've got 10 people, that helps a lot. One organization can do a great, th a great amount of work, but you know, start multiplying that, you know, 10 organizations, 40 organizations, work with your local elected uh, people, people that you've actually put into office. You know, I'm not saying just, you know, that the public has put into office because they're going to work with you. They're, they're your representatives. They want to know what you, you know, I think that people have the power. But working with those elected officials, telling them your story, 
you know, you may be working with an aide for a while, doing it in the right manner, doing it professionally. I think those, those will take you a long way. I've got a lot of favorite spots. I can't say just one. I think the area that, and it's more of an area, um, but approaching the Z House, the oak trees, the moss that's there, the, all the things that are in that area, the Z House, the spring that's close to it, things that really aren't on the main trail. Um, but there's a lot there. There, uh, Again, it kind of gets down to the history of an area and what, you know, for me. Uh, also, just the nature that occurs. I heard a story, it's from the Lisey's actually, that had the property before we took it over. <clears throat> and she was telling me that uh, actually on her last trip up the canyon, I assume one of her last, um, she and her sister had gone and taken horses and ridden up the canyon. Well, when they got to the spring area, it was when the mon monarchs were coming through. And it was one of those clusters. That would be neat to see, but that would just be a... The canyon, for me, the canyon has always given me little gifts, or that's the way I've thought of it along the way. I don't think much about legacy, but I'm hoping maybe along the way, I've taught some people at least to look at things a little differently, that a love for nature and a love for history.